You ever want to speak up, but decide not to? Have you ever hesitated to share your thoughts out of fear of what others may think? The fear of being rejected by a client, a boss, a coworker, or anybody is an overpowering feeling that holds many leaders back from making suggestions and offering their thought leadership. Your voice is needed. Your input matters. Today, I'm going to unpack the fear of being rejected and what to do when this imaginary talk track attempts to hold you back. Let's dive in. This is part three in a four-part series I'm doing on how to overcome imposter syndrome. The imposter syndrome sabotages the work of many talented executives. Many leaders often feel that others expect them to know more than they actually do. And as a result, they hold back from offering their opinion on topics out of fear that someone may realize that they don't know as much as others think they know. This is the classic imposter syndrome. Fear has a way of paralyzing progress, creating anxiety, and holding many leaders back from speaking up. Do you ever want to speak up but decide not to? See, many people hold back and don't contribute as much as they want to. They lack the courage to raise a different point of view. They will sometimes identify with someone else's comments, criticism, or praise because it's just easier. Some will even withdraw from situations before others have a chance to ask their opinion. And what makes matters worse is when they think something is wrong with them for feeling this way in the first place. I talked about this in my last two episodes. If you missed the first two on imposter syndrome, you can check them out on my YouTube channel. Today, I want to unpack the fear of putting ourselves out there and having someone else dismiss our input or worse yet, flat out disagree with it. Let me share with you a story. I was talking to an executive recently who had a great idea. And with excitement, I jumped on it only to find that their enthusiasm didn't match my own. Now, since my job is to, is, is to pick up on these vibes, I abruptly interrupted our conversation and asked, what is your monkey mind saying right now? Now, those of you who follow my work know that I often refer to the monkey mind as that little voice in our head who tends to hold us back. I said, what's going on inside right now? Their response confirmed that they were concerned that if they brought up their idea, others would probably reject it. As you can imagine, I had to address this, right? See, many people wrongly believe that their boss, client, or coworker is going to reject a proposal or idea before they even present it. So they start getting defensive. They start getting discouraged or irritated. And before long, that anger manifests itself. Many people I've seen work themselves up just by playing out what they think may happen. And then when they eventually present their thoughts, they aren't at their best. And if their opinion is dismissed, the typical response becomes, I told you so, I just knew it. The advice I give them is the same I'm going to give you. Timing and positioning. If someone rejects your suggestions, it does not mean that your idea, product, or service isn't good. And it certainly doesn't mean that you aren't good enough either. Most of the time, it comes down to two things. Timing and positioning. You need to time the conversation at the right time, and you must position it in the right way. Let me tell you a story. When my son was in high school, he once asked his mom on a Saturday morning if he could go out that night, and she rejected him. When he came to me, I just laughed. It wasn't that your mom didn't want you to go out. It simply meant you timed your ass wrong. She's not a morning person, so why would you make that request on a Saturday morning? The same is true if he asked me for advice at 10 p.m. at night, which isn't my best time. Positioning is also important. I was coaching a lady one time who was convinced her boss didn't value her input. When she told me on how she presented her ideas, it was really clear that she messaged it wrong. And I told her so. The next time you worry about rejection, I want you to remember timing and positioning. It takes time to master timing and positioning. It's a process that requires you to become comfortable being uncomfortable. If you want to elevate your leadership, go to sealevelfreedom.com and book a call. 
I will give you the roadmap to champion growth for yourself, your team, and your business. I included a link in the description. If you and your team are still living in a world of endless limitations, let me at least buy you a copy of my book. The only thing I ask is you pay for shipping. The book is called Freedom to Experiment, How to Ignite a New Level of Energy, Focus, and Momentum in Yourself and Your Team. Follow the link in the description and I'll personally sign a copy for you. Okay, if you like what I shared today, do me a favor, give it a thumbs up, drop a comment related to your business, and of course subscribe. Because each week I'm sharing content to help you and your team embrace change, focus your efforts, and accelerate your results. Remember this, you're just one idea away. We'll talk to you soon.